I'm Luka Stanislav Dvořák. I'm a herpetologist from Czech Republic. I'm trying to educate people about the balance of living with the nature because there is many synanthropic species that are living in the close proximity of the human settlements and some of them are potentially dangerous. Mainly I'm trying to teach them about the scorpions, about tarantulas and about the snakes because there is a lot of like myths about the animals around here that are resulting in uh, those animals killed. Mexico is an expansive country that is brimming with wildlife everywhere you look. But with growing populations and booming tourism, our homes are increasingly expanding into natural habitats around us. And many reptiles are injured or killed. Lucas Drozak is a herpetologist who is changing this narrative by educating locals about how to live in harmony with the wildlife. Why do people call you the scorpion whisperer? When they were building the skate park in Mazunte, they would uh, lift some wood. Uh, the scorpions love tight places, so they just uncovered the wood and they were like, the first time there were two huge scorpions. So they were, they just jumped away and they were like, oh fuck, scorpions. And I was like, oh fuck yeah, scorpions. <laughs> and I just immediately went there and I slowly take, in, uh, take them on the hand one by one and relocate them to a safe place mm -hmm. where they can stay throughout the day before going on a hunt in mm -hmm. the night. I'm offering uh, not just snake relocations, but if it is needed, uh, tarantula or scorpion uh, relocations. But usually the people are all already used, so it's more about the snakes. And another thing is I'm uh, offering advices how to live with them more harmoniously. Yeah. And uh, when I got the call about snake, usually I go there, uh, they show me where the snake is, and sometimes I fi find it, and uh, when I'm handling it, and in the whole process I'm trying to explain them what the snake is doing there, that the snake is probably living around their settlement, like, could be 10 years, and mm. they never saw it. So it was just uh, uh, really unfortunate coincidence yeah. that they actually met the snake. Mm. There is uh, about 30 species of snakes mm -hmm. and there are two genus of tarantula, genus Liltocatl and genus Dabus and there is about I think four species of scorpions but the most common one is Centuroides nigrimanus. Mm -hmm. You can see mainly is the western lyre snake. About 80% of the snake house calls are about the western lyre snake. Then there are the boas, boa sigma, boa constrictor. They can grow up to four meters and they are huge constrictors which could even eat the huge iguanas that are just climbing all around our heads. You know, the iguanas are the males could be about one and a half meter. Mm. And that's like perfect snack for the boa. People are breeding chickens in here, you know, so boas are really opportunistic feeders, so even if they would see a cat, chicken, small dog, whatever will fit in their belly, they would uh, eat. So yeah. that's another really common species in here. And the third one, that's the blood snake, mm -hmm. which eats just tarantulas and scorpions, which are in here in huge amounts. Mm -hmm. Later that evening, Lucas showed us quite how many incredible species are living just metres away from the main road. Because in hillsides that are cleared like this, mm -hmm. it's like one of the easiest ways how to spot snakes. You are always looking for a reflection of their scale and for the unusual pattern that's poking out of the nature. And I can see anything that's going out of the north. What is the main thing you're looking for? Uh, I'm looking for mainly for the snakes, but they are like really hard to find in here and there is not much. That's tailless with scorpion. They are virtually blind, they are cave dwelling species. They have these antennas, 
uh, yeah, that oh, are wow. that looks like whips and with them they are looking for prey and they are feeling like vibrations and everything <laughs> and they have two pincers yeah tail less whip scorpion not Taylor Swift. Not scorpion. Taylor Swift. Yeah, yeah. The most dangerous scorpion. <laughs> yeah, in the world. That's it. <laughs> for sure. Oh no fucking way! There is Danopida. This, this is ogre face spider. They have the biggest eyes of all of the spider. They are the only net casting pieces of spiders, and they are casting it on the prey. They actually threw it on the prey, which is for me so amazing. And just if you would get the eyes, how huge they are. It's insane. This is a male. Oh, it's already getting eaten. So it's like at least a day. They that you can see these things basically they make special webbing then they basically come on it <laughs> and then with these special holders they suck in the semen and then they put it into the female look at the huge the, don't want to because there is for sure still venom this is one thing they are pretty big they don't even have that much of a strong venom. They are basically killing the prey just with the insane the fang hits. Yeah. I think it's a male that is looking for female, or it could be a female that's looking for a burrow because the cutting of the trees. Right now, you will probably see how quick they can be. Yeah. So she is turning the back on me to kick out the hair. <laughs> Why? What happens if there's a quick movement? It might fall and it would be scared. Oh. Wow, it's so nice. I actually really don't do it. It's kind of tickling, right? I didn't realize they were this like, yeah, heavy, I guess. Yeah, yeah, and like fluffy. If yeah. you touch their legs, they, they are like kind of fluffy. So this is the most common scorpion of the Oaxacan Pacific coast. It's uh, Centruroides nigrimanus and a lot of the Centruroides species have quite strong venom but this one is I would say mild because <laughs> it will cause a huge pain for a couple of minutes and uh, then you are like zoomed out the whole day because we are messy and we are leaving our garbage cans open not just garbage cans, people are, you know, like littering all around. The kitchen is filled with leftover food. That brings the, the cockroaches and the rats. And the nature is trying to keep the balance every time. So if there is too much cockroaches, it will bring uh, the scorpions, tarantulas, they less whip scorpions, everything that hunts the, the cockroaches. And if uh, the garbage brings rats, it will bring another snakes. And another snake can bring uh, the coral snake, which is uh, their main diet is just snakes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they could eat lizards, but usually it's just snakes. So you can actually bring the most deadly venomous snake in here just by letting your garbage open. Now we are in Zapotal and uh, I got a call that uh, one family have uh, coral snakes at their property and they need advice how to deal with them because it could be dangerous to that little girl. So I'm in here to check the places that could be inviting and uh, to advise them how to make a place less inviting for snakes because coral snakes, uh, their diet is uh, made just up from other snakes. A few days ago when I wrote to you, we saw two, maybe copulating, I don't know, because uh -huh. they were moving a lot and crossing the tail. Okay, what were the colors? It was black, mostly black with red, yellow, red. That's for sure, that's coral snake, for sure. And now uh, they, uh, they were probably mating or fighting uh, mm. it could be one on one of it because like the males are trying to push the other male and if that was the case then that means that the, the female is nearby too 
So, and yeah, if you, the thing is that coral snakes, their diet is just snakes. Mm -hmm. Snakes and little lizards, but mostly just snakes. Mm -hmm. So the more inviting the place is for other snakes, the more inviting it is for coral snake because if you don't have snakes you don't have coral snakes oh, okay. because they cannot live without other snakes so yeah they are probably because you said that there is a lot of snakes that are hunting all of them oh, okay. and they are keeping like the population in check if there is something lying on the ground so they don't have to like dig you know the place if there are some pieces of wood or metal just lying around that's the best place for they snakes around. They go right under it. Like, and so here, for yeah, so, so yeah, actually even like in oh, here or the metal is the best for them. If you uh, to clean the paths, yeah. if you have clean paths, then uh, it's way safer. You can first you can see it and uh, then it is not uh, that much inviting because the snakes don't even want to be when it, where it is clear because they know that they are too much visible to try to leave the garbage not open, you know, and no food waste. If you will leave some food waste, it will bring the cockroaches. Cockroaches bring mice and lizards, and it's always stacking up. And it's always beginning in the little small things like the cockroaches. As we searched the property for the elusive coral snake, Lucas found something spectacular. Oh yeah, the tarantula hawk wasp. I cannot believe my eyes. <laughs> this is a special type of wasp. This thing that's flying in here, that yeah. it's looking for tarantulas. And this thing will hunt tarantulas, then it will sting them and paralyze the tarantula. And then it would drag the tarantula to its burrow, but that is already digged, uh, digged up, and, uh, and lay the eggs inside of the tarantula. And the eggs will you know, uh, turn into larva and the larva uh, will start to slowly eat away the, the tarantula, but piece by piece, so it's still alive. And they will eat the, the uh, organs that are vital for them. They are eating them as the last thing wow. so because they wanted to keep it fresh. So they are really brutal and vicious hunters <laughs> and you really don't want to be sting by one of them. It's said that if one uh, tarantula hawk wasp will sting you, it's like a kick from a bull. The sun is moving like this, right? So this is probably like one of the sunny spots, right? I'm preparing this place as tight as possible to the ground so the snakes feel comfortable there. I'm actually trying to make a place that would be inviting so we could catch the coral snakes and relocate them. And uh, they like tight spots because no other danger would be looking for them there. And it's good uh, first for uh, heating up even throughout the day without being endangered. And uh, then uh, it's a great spot for, uh, for uh, shedding the skin. So it's inviting in a lot of different ways. There were no coral snakes that day, but the family who called Lucas were left with a new understanding of how to live alongside the wildlife. Yeah, no, and I want to keep this place vital and perfectly nature. Uh -huh. uh, but it's good to talk with you even if we don't see the snake because now I understand more where, mm -hmm. where I have to be careful, where I can, I can explain her where she don't better not to go or yeah, and everything. Like a lot of times it's just about the knowing. When you mm -hmm. get to know them, you find out that they are actually not even dangerous to you because when you don't want to kill it or when you don't want to catch it, they don't really want to do anything yeah. with you. They are just your friendly neighbors that are eating other mm. snakes. <laughs> we met up to learn more and try to find the venomous cor <laughs> <laughs> Venomous. Any time. Ven. Oh. Mus. <laughs> okay. Venomous. I, the venomous. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! This is going in the outtakes. <laughs>